any time or anywhere. Are you ready when the Lord shall come? Are you ready? Are you ready when the Lord shall come? Are you ready when the Lord shall come? In the morning, night, or noon, any time or anywhere, are you ready when the Lord shall come? He can come at any time. A miracle night. Amen. Yes. Tonight is a miracle night. He is the Alpha and Omega. I say tonight is a miracle night. Hallelujah. about to be released. It is coming through my voice, but it is God speaking. God is speaking, but it's going to come through my voice. If President Trump or Obama were to give a one-on-one -on -one talk to you, most likely you will have pain or a recorder. So I want you to pay on divided attention. God wants to help you tonight. Yes, yes. What God wants to release, many of these things I've experienced. So I'm not talking theoretical. I'm talking Bible-based. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He says, He that sinned is of his devil. The devil sinned from the beginning. And the reason the Son of God was manifested was to destroy the works of the devil. Tonight we're going to talk about destroying evil works. Man. You must Man. destroy them. Yes. Don't destroy them, they can destroy you. The word tonight is not for shallow Christians. We are going deep. In Psalm 42, verse 7, it says, Deep call it unto deep, at the noise of thy water sprouts. All thy waves and billows have overrun me. Deep call it unto deep. Deep does not call unto shallow. Let unto deep at the noise of thy water sprout. That means the noise is a distraction. But deep is still calling regardless of the noise. Yes. Many times we let the noise distract us. Let's go deep today. Amen. Yes. Shallow, in the shallow, there are no treasures. In the shallow, you don't have oil, you don't have gold, you don't have diamond. To get those things, you have to go deep. Shallow people like to stay by the beach because it's comfortable. Deep people, they go deep into the water. We're going deep tonight. If you want to catch big fish, you must go deep. If you're content with little fish, stay by the seashore. We're going deep. Tonight, we want to talk about destroying evil works. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, that the reason the Son of God was manifested was to destroy the works of the devil. That means the devil has works. He wasn't manifested to destroy the devil. That time is coming when the devil will be thrown to the lake of fire. But the reason why he was manifested was to destroy the works of the devil. And the primary work of the devil is sin. So Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. His works include, we've done some of them in prayer, curses, infirmities, evil soul ties, evil covenants, lust, which expresses itself in fornication, sexual perversion. These are the works of the devil. So much more. Christ came to destroy them. Now, the Bible tells us in Romans 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is dead. So if the devil has works, 
For every work, there's a wage. Do you go to work? You get paid. Don't you get paid? Amen. So, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. So when there is a work, that means there's a worker. Somebody hear me? If he's destroying the works of the devil, that means there are workers. So you must destroy the workers. If you don't destroy the workers, they will punch you tomorrow and continue the work. <laughs> Somebody hear what I'm saying? And the workers are not flesh and blood. All right. And there is a witch. Death. So Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. And then Jesus said something very profound in John 14, verse 12. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, these works that I do, you shall do also. And greater works than this shall you do, because I go to the Father. So Jesus is saying, I came to destroy the works of the devil, and you too will do the same. Amen. Amen. And greater works than this will you do. The work Jesus did was limited to Israel. But the work we are doing today in this end times is global. It's a greater work. Now, for you to do the work, you need something. You need power. You see, when I wanted to move this, that is work. I called for two strong men with power. Because I'm smart. <laughs> Mm-hmm. If I wanted to do it myself, maybe my back would be hurting me now. Mm. So I needed power to move that. Mm. So anytime there's work to be done, power is required. Mm. Now, in Luke chapter 9, something interesting happens, verse 1, verse 2. In Luke chapter 9, we see that Jesus gathered his disciples. He called his disciples. And he gave them power. He called his disciples and he gave them power over devils mm -hmm. and authority to heal diseases. Luke 9, verse 1. And then in Luke 9, verse 2, he sent them on the mission. He first gave them power and then he sent them. You must receive power before you start to do the work. Or you can be messed up. Now there's something about this power. Today we are talking about destroying evil works. But to destroy evil works, you need power. Amen. Not blah 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 blah. Mm. Power. <laughs> In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus says, I have given you power to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You see, this thing Jesus is saying, he said to his disciples, the Bible says he called the disciples, and he sent them out. They came back with a report. They were excited. They said, even the devils, the spirits, are subject to us in your name. And then he says, yes, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And then he tells them, I've given you power. Power is for the disciples of Christ. Yeah. Authority is for the believer. Amen. Pastor, what do you mean? Let me explain it to you. Authority and power are two different things. Mm -hmm. Authority is the right to exercise power. Yeah. The fact that you have the right to exercise power does not mean you have power. Even in corporate America, they give some people big titles. But meanwhile, they don't have any function. They just have a big name plate. So authority is the right to exercise power. Power is the ability to change things. Power is the ability to do things. Power is the ability to change the status quo and get things moving. That's what authority is. In New York, where I reside, NYPD, they have authority and power. They have the authority to arrest a criminal. But if their gun is not bigger than those other criminals' guns, they don't have power. They will have to call for reinforcement. Daniel chapter 10. In person. Daniel prayed. He got a revelation. He needed, a, he needed an explanation. He needed an explanation. God sent an angel to give him the explanation. On the way, a demonic principality called the Prince of Persia 
intercepted that angel. That angel was delayed 21 days. You know why? Because that angel did not have sufficient power to overthrow the prince of Persia. And so reinforcement had to come. So every believer has authority. But not every believer has power. That's why the disciples, they went to Jesus. He said, Lord, how come you couldn't cast that demon out? <laughs> Just say, yeah, I gave you authority already, but yes, you couldn't cast him out because you did not have sufficient power. This kind does not go out except by fasting and prayer. And because of your unbelief, no power. Mm. So how do we get this power that we are talking about? We have the authority, we are believers. But what about the power? When Jesus stood before Pilate, he was quiet. Pilate was going, bah, 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 bah. Jesus was quiet. And then Pilate got upset. He says, do you know who I am? Don't you know I have the power to have you crucified? And Jesus opened his mouth for the first time. He said, Pilate, you will have no power over me yeah. if it wasn't given to you from yeah. above. Mm -hmm. Power is given from above. Yeah. The power that Pilate had was given to him by the Father in heaven. Earthly power. Jesus has spiritual power, mm -hmm. which is over earthly power. Mm -hmm. So power is given. Now, we saw with that angel that was sent to Daniel. Are, we, are you following? Mm -hmm. We saw with the angel that was sent to Daniel. The answer was given, but there was an interception mm -hmm. of that answer. So, when God wants to give you power, he will release the power. The fact that power is released does not mean it has been received. Something can intercept it. The strong man can hold it. I say, ah, he's not getting it. He's a sinner. He's not getting it. He's involved in some hanky-panky business. And it is intercepted 21 days or more. So the fact that power is released does not mean it has been received. You must remove whatever is intercepting it. Uh -huh. So how do we get this power? Let's understand some basic things. Grace gives. Grace gives. It's grace that gives salvation. Grace gives. Faith takes. That's why we take it by force. That's faith. Grace gives. Faith takes. Faith cannot take what grace has not given. Impossible. Faith cannot take what grace has not given. Anytime faith takes what grace has not given, it's either that person is operating in witchcraft. Oh. I have faith. I have the faith that I'm to marry a second one. Ah! And then I go and marry a second wife. Grace did not allow that. So faith takes what grace gives. And grace has given you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and overcome the power of the enemy. You got to take it by force. Yes. You want to destroy evil works? You need power. A few principles of our power. I've told you, Satan does not really respect the presence of God. You can tell us about that. The only thing Satan respects is the power of God. Okay. When that power is applied against him. The Bible says, and since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence take it by force. That is power. You take it by force. You cannot appease demonic forces. You cannot pacify them. The only language they understand is violence. Mm. They don't understand pacification. Mm. Violence. Warfare. Mm. If, if, if that were not the case, Jesus would not give us weapons of warfare. He won't give us an armor of God, the whole armor of God. Why do we need the whole armor of God? Why do we need weapons that are, that are not carnal? Because there's a battle to be fought. So we need power. 
So we begin to develop our power base by fasting, by prayer, by obedience. And we begin to grow in stature and power. When two powers meet, when two powers meet in the spirit realm, the lesser power must yield to the greater power. We saw that in Daniel chapter 10. Even though it was an angel, he had to yield to the prince of Persia. When two powers meet, the lesser power must yield to the greater power. And something about power. If you don't have power, the enemy will keep you in bondage. He mm. will make you a prisoner in your own house. Yes, yes. Let me tell you something about power. Let me break it down one more, just a little bit. I come from West Africa. I come from Nigeria. Look at the African continent as well. Two centuries ago, Europeans came and they just took over everything. <laughs> because we have no power to resist them. <laughs> if we have power to resist them, they will think twice. Yeah. They will think twice. Lack of power is the foundation of bondage. Ooh. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. So when you are filled with the power of God and you have the fire of God in you, when the demons are looking for someone to oppress, they say, no, don't go to that man. It's dangerous. Go to the other one. Skip that house. Go to the other house. They are smart. So we need to understand these fundamentals before we destroy evil works. Now, in Matthew chapter 16, of course, I told you the disciples they had gone out and they came back with their report and they were excited and they, they gave feedback to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 16, they gave Jesus feedback. You say, oh, some say you're Elijah, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're this prophet, some say you're this and that and all that. Just go, oh, yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. What about you? Who do you say I am? They all kept quiet. But trust Peter. He said, I know the answer. I know the answer. That was the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And Jesus commended him. He said, Well done, Simon Bajona. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. Thou art Peter, a rock, and upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. And then he said something after that. He said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. That is power. Mm -hmm. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you buy, whatever you lock on earth shall be locked in hell. And whatever you lose, Whatever you open on earth shall be opened in heaven. Hmm. That is power. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard it say that um, the spirit realm determines what happens in the physical realm? Mm-hmm. Jesus reversed that. He reversed that right there. He said, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth in the physical realm, that's the physical realm. Whatever you bind in the physical realm, it will be bound in the spirit realm. So you are in the earthly realm, the natural realm, and you can become and influence what happens in the spirit realm. Yes. Yes. So long as you have the keys. Yes. <laughs> so long as you have the right set of keys. Yes. So long as you have the keys of the kingdom. So of course we have canal keys. If they lock this door, the key of my house in New Jersey, no matter how I try, it can't open it. It can't. If I like I stay here from morning to night, there's no way my house keys are going to open that door. But the kingdom keys are master keys. Any door, if you open. Make sure you have the keys. Don't let Satan have those keys. If Satan has the keys, he will drive you to a horrible destination. That's what he will do. So he has given us power to destroy all these evil works. You have to ask God for power. There are different kinds of power. In Acts chapter 1, he said, carry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Power to be my witnesses. In Mark chapter 16, it talks about a different kind of power. 
in Mark chapter 16, he's talking about power manifestations. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 to 18, he says, In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall pick up serpents. They shall drink deadly poison. It will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's power. Yes. That's the manifestation of power. Yeah. It's very easy to know whether you have power or not. Are things changing? If a stranger comes here and says, I need all of you to leave the room. The first thing is like, who are you? We don't recognize you. We don't know who you are. We don't recognize you. But if Apostle says, oh, I need all of you to leave the room for a minute, you're like, oh, okay, Apostle. Power gets things moving. Destroying evil works. One major work of Satan, I told you, crosses is entanglement. The yoke of entanglement. He will get you entangled in things that before you recover from it, time has gone. Entanglement is very horrible. Entanglement can cause poverty in the life of someone. Satan will get the person entangled in credit card debt. Many Christians are entangled in credit card debt to the thousands. And then God will say, Christian, you say, yes, Lord. I'm sending you as a missionary to Brazil. You say, hallelujah, you give testimony in church. I'm going to Brazil as a missionary. Satan will say, let us see. Let us see how you do it. You go and buy your ticket. You swipe. Oh, this is maxed out. So, no problem. Oh, this has got just very little on it left. Okay, let me try one more. Oh, this one has been closed. So, you can say, ha ha ha, let me see how you go to Brazil. Why? Because he has entangled that person in debt. So, a, a deliverance minister can come. See that person and say, I cast out the spirit of poverty. Go in the name of Jesus. That spirit will go. But the death is still there. Because mm. it's an entanglement. Okay. An entanglement is different from the spirit. Yeah. Mm. Destroying evil works. Another entanglement is in relationships. Mm. When Satan sees that you have promise, he will put you in a relationship with people that will entangle you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 22 verse 10, it says, do not put an ox and an ass on the same yoke. Mm -hmm. Why? The ox is a hard worker, but the ass just likes to play. Just likes to sit on his butt and do nothing all day. <laughs> so by the time the ox and the ass are working the field, mm -hmm. the ox is doing all the work. And the ass is just having fun. After a while, the ox will be like, why am I working? Doesn't even make sense. I'm working and he's eating the harvest. Because they are on the same yoke. Before you know it, that ox will become an ass. The ass will never become an ox. Never. It's the ox that will become an ass. So Satan will mesh them together. Because he knows the destiny ahead of him. To destroy that evil work will be very difficult. That is why God said, do not be unequally yoked. Yeah. Because yeah. God knows what it takes to destroy that evil work. There will have to be a separation. Mm. Mm. It can't wait. Then there is delay. That's another word to say that delay. There are different kinds of delay. There is God delay. You know, sometimes God will delay you, and you miss your boss, and you escape an accident. And that's divine delay. Mm -hmm. Then it's another kind of delay from Satan. This one, he will delay you so that you don't get the blessing at the right time. God said, ah, you're going to be a millionaire by 40. Satan will bring delay, and then you become the millionaire by the age of 99. Meanwhile, you are supposed to be a millionaire at 40 so that you can finance the gospel. Mm. At 99, what else can you do? Mm. 
delay. And delay is very dangerous. You know why? Because when there is delay, people that are behind you, they will overtake you. They will go ahead of you. Delay is very dangerous because when you are delayed, the Bible says, hope defied makes the heart sick. When there's so much delay, you've been expecting and expecting, you thought this promise was going to come today, and it has not come. You've been waiting for years. You know what will happen? You begin to lose faith. You will get frustrated. Before you know it, you will get angry. Before you know it, you begin to point your finger at God. Before you know it, you begin to complain and grumble. Because of that delay. We might want to destroy evil works. But we need to get an understanding of what these things are. He that sinned is of the devil. That's the fundamental evil work that has to be destroyed. When we had a gentleman in Brooklyn, I won't mention this. My mother knows the person. When this person came to us, ah, the demons were too many. Too many. But we began in the name of Jesus to stop them out one by one. To get them out of him one by one. We got rid of alcohol, tobacco, everything. In the name of Jesus, we was walking streets. No problem. Delivered. And then, my mom had traveled. She came back. I said, who is this person? I said, mom, <laughs> it's that man <laughs> of like six, seven months ago. That's him. said, wow, what a change. I said, yes, great change. And then a year, a year later, he went back to his old place. Yeah. And when he came back to us, he came back worse. Yeah. You cannot be in sin and expect to prosper. Yeah. You cannot destroy evil works if you agree with the evil worker. If you're in agreement with the evil worker, you can't destroy evil work. Let us close this word because we're going to pray tonight. Let us go to Mark chapter 5. We close in Mark chapter 5. Let me go to the Bible so they don't say the Apostle brought this man that did not go to the Bible. <laughs> Mark chapter 5, I believe, from this one. And they came over, and they came over onto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. So this is a man, he had an unclean spirit. Verse 3. Who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound, with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. This man was demon possessed and very violent. So they used to chain him. And they would just be breaking the chain. They would just be breaking the chain. Because there was an evil spirit in him. You know when the Philistines they chained Samson? Samson does this. The chains broke. That's what the demons are doing for this man. So they will chain him to try and restrain him, and he will just break the chain. You cannot use physical means to bind spiritual enemies. You cannot use carnal physical means to bind spiritual enemies. Every time they did that, nothing happened. He just broke the chains, he pulled them apart. That's fine. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And always, night and day, that means he had no break. Satan will not give you a break. Night and day, always, he will not give you a break. Satan will not, he does not want you to rest. 
And so this man was destroying himself night and day. The six. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. This is the evil spirit, not the boy. He ran and worshipped him. And cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou son of the most high God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Hear what the demon is saying. It's, this is all what we've been saying tonight. The demon says to Jesus, he goes and he worships him. Because every knee shall bow. Then the demon now says, What have I got to do with you? You do your own. Let me be doing my own. Stay your lane. Let me stay my lane. <laughs> but since I adjure you, don't torment me. The demon that has been tormenting this boy kept him in tombs. Made him cut himself night and day. The demon that has been dealing with this boy is asking Jesus for mercy. Meanwhile, he never showed this boy mercy. Mm -hmm. He said, I adjure thee, torment me not. What that demon is saying to Jesus is, I adjure thee, do not exercise your power over me. That's right. Mm -hmm. You can be Jesus all you want, but please, don't release your power against yes. me. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying, torment me not. Verse 8. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are men. You know, tonight we prayed against demonic network. Who remembers? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. They hang out in the network. In the network. Just like when you see the spirit of delay, that is the strong man. When spirit of delay comes in, it will invite the spirit of discouragement in. Mm -hmm. When the spirit of discouragement comes in, it will invite the spirit of frustration in. Because the more delayed you are, the more frustrated you will get. Yes. Yeah. And when you're frustrated, anger will come in. Right. And before you know it, there's unbelief. There's complaining. All those spirits will be coming in. It's a network. Yeah. My name is Legion, for we are many. The stem. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Demons like to remain in their country. Mm. They said, even if you're going to send us out, don't send us out of our country. We like to remain in their country. Territory. Yes. We did one deliverance in New Jersey for an Indian man. Oh boy, that demon made us sweat. <laughs> Three of us. That demon, we have done deliverance for the man in Brooklyn. We cleared everything out in the name of Jesus. We cleared everything out. We knew we cleared it out. You know how we knew? By the time we were done with the man in the name of Jesus, he looked up, he saw his wife, and said, darling, I love you. And the wife started to cry. We said, why are you crying? He said, for 15 years, this man has never, ever said he loves you. Mm -hmm. Never. So he got his deliverance. Then on a 